This program is a continuation of the use of the IUPACULs to name other classes of organic chemicals. In our previous program, we took a look at branched alkanes and halogenoalkanes by introducing a prefix in front of a parent name. A parent name was derived from the longest continuous chain of carbon. And then in front of that, we would put words like ethyl or methyl, fluoro or chloro, as well as perhaps a number to give its location in the carbon chain. In this program, we're going to continue on with another look at a prefix method used for ethers, and then a whole host of other um, classes of chemicals that use a suffix method. So let's start by reviewing the prefix method. I begin by identifying the longest continuous chain of carbon, which in this case is a three carbon chain. One, two, three. And I would write down propane. I then identify the branch. This branch with the oxygen attached to a methyl group is called methoxy. So to complete the name, I put the address or location of this methoxy group. So two methoxy propane. Let's try going the other way. So again, I have propane, a three carbon chain and attached to carbon number one, I have a two carbon chain indicated by ethoxy. So there's the oxygen and a two carbon chain. Now I'm going to complete the carbons to ensure that they all get four bonds and add the hydrogens. Now we're going to move on to methods that involve changing the end of the word, in particular the A-N-E that comes at the end of the parent name or stem. So alkenes and alkynes. These are unsaturated hydrocarbons. It's unsaturated because it's not full of um, hydrogens. The double bond and the triple bond in the case of the alkynes indicate that they could add more hydrogens to the molecule. Let's look now at how the end of the word changes when we name the molecule. In the case of alkenes, we put a location and the uh, suffix ene. And in the case of alkynes, a number and the suffix ine. So let's look at how we can apply it to this molecule. The first thing I do is I recognize it's five carbons long. So the parent name would be pentane. I remove the A and E off the end and call it now pentene because of a double bond. Now, the number corresponds to the first number in the bonded carbon. So if I number it this way, one, two, three, that's what I'm interested in. So pent pentene. Um, let's try drawing this one. Butyne, ine indicating a triple bond, but four carbons. So let's put the triple bond there and one chloro indicating a chlorine is attached on the first one. Making sure all the carbons have four bonds and then I'll proceed to add the hydrogens. In the case of alcohols, the end of the word is changed to an with a number and all to match with alcohol. So a three carbon alcohol I have here, one, two, three, the longest chain, starts off with propane. I'm going to remove that now and call it pro and then propan for that. The location of the hydroxyl functional group is on carbon number two and the OL at the end. 
This one's a little bit trickier, ethan-1,2-diol, eth indicating a two-carbon molecule. Now a diol means there's two OH groups on carbon one and carbon two. And now we'll add the hydrogens. And there's our molecule. Now moving on to aldehydes and ketones. In the case of an aldehyde, the suffix is anil. And ketone, anone. So what do we have first here? I notice the presence of the carbonyl group at the end of the chain. So that suggests to me an aldehyde. It's a five carbon chain. So again, I'm gonna start with pentane. Remove that. And then pentanal. So that's named the chain, but I do have this branch that I also need to add. When I'm numbering this chain, I begin at the end closest to the functional group. So that would be this end. One, two, three, four, and five. So this methyl group that we have here, I'd have to add in front and on carbon four, so four, methyl pentanol. To butanone, indicating a ketone, a four carbon molecule, double bonded oxygen, on carbon number two, and make sure carbons all have four bonds. In the case of carboxylic acids and esters, for the carboxylic acid, our suffix is anoic acid, and esters, they're a little bit different in that we both add a prefix and we change the end of the word, the suffix, to anoid. So let's start off by identifying what we have here. There we have that uh, carboxyl group at the end of the molecule, and it's a three carbon molecule, so this is going to be called propane, and then it would become propanoic acid. Start numbering at the end closest to the functional group because I have some branches here. And so I have to give both addresses here. So this would be 2, 3, dichloral. And lastly, an ester. So I'm going to look here at this part first. Ethano-8 indicates to me that I have a two carbon from ethane. So I have a two carbon and there is the carboxyl functional group attached to it. So that's the ethanoate. Attached to this ar uh, attached to this oxygen is the branch propyl, a three carbon chain. So there's the branch And up here is my ester. Make sure everybody has the appropriate number of hydrogens to finish it off. Um, I'll just go H2 here, H2 here, and H3 here. I want to do one more of these, um, just because they are a bit tricky. So again, I'm going to identify my carboxyl functional group and it is part of this chain. So this part, three carbon chain, is going to become propanoate. And that is the branch that's attached to it. So this would be called ethyl propanoate. All right, let's try a couple of these now. 
Um, we have to give both its class and its IUPAC name. So here I have COO, um, not COOH, COO. That indicates that we have here an ester. And in fact, it has only one carbon in it. So this would be called something methanoate. There's my branch, a three carbon chain. So this would be called propyl methanoate. Molecule down below, I can recognize this at the end of the molecule. I have a carbonyl group at the end, and that is characteristic of the class called the aldehydes. So the length of my chain is one, two, three, and four. This is a branch being in brackets like this. So four carbons indicates to me butanol. So that covers the aldehyde name, but I now have to give the location of this branch starting at the end. So that is one, two, and that carbon has a hydrogen and the branch attached to it. So this is two methyl butanol. So that brings us to the end of the chemicals we're responsible for naming. It all begins with the appropriate parent structure by identifying the longest continuous chain of carbon. And then we can modify either the, in front of the word using a prefix, or depending on the class of chemical, we may have to alter the suffix or the end of the word. And in some cases, such as these, I actually have to alter both. Thanks for watching.